Hello folks, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video where we are continuing with um, this little old gauge clockwork locomotive. Now I'm sorry that there was no video yesterday. I spent basically the whole day um, looking on Google um, for information on this loco and for spare parts because if you haven't watched the last video um, then that thing that sort of gets tighter as you wind up, you know, you do that and it gets tighter. But I'll show you what I mean. That little thing under there has all of the. Don't feel like it'll catch it. That thing there, you can see, has a break in it. Um, you can see all the different layers. That basically, as you wind the engine up, that gets. Tighter and tighter and tighter, and then as you release the wheels, you know, the wheels spin. So, anyway, in this video, we're going to be um, starting the restoration work uh, on the loco. So, I'll show you the advanced set of tools that I have sandpaper, screwdriver, and my pocket knife which has um, I may or may not need a few of the different things that are on this um, so yeah so first things first we're going to take this dome off which is a brass dome it sort of looks like a really rusty dome at the moment but it should be brass also need to buy some metal polish in order to sort that out Basically, it's just a screw which goes into the top of the boiler. Well, the boiler, well, where it would be in real life. So you take the screw out. It's quite a long thread, I've had it off before. Um, so, as you can see, it's basically just your normal metal dome. Oh my god, the camera focused. It's a miracle, folks. Um, and then a screw which has a little bit of thread. Mostly just like a blank surface sort of thing. I don't know what they're called, but then I think after a bit of polish and a little bit of sanding and all that, this might look good. In fact, it might not actually be brass, I think it might be like copper that's been painted into a gold colour. Not sure, but um, anyway. If it is, I might just have to spray paint it in a gold sort of paint or whatever, but, you know. As well, the cab um, is broken, so it just comes straight off. So keep all the bits together. So, in order to take the body off, there should be four screws. One of those screws is missing, and it's been missing for God knows how many years. So, again, it just uses a screwdriver. There's one screw here, here, and on the other side, here, and there should be, so here, and then there should be another one here, you can see the gap for it, but it isn't there. So it's just a case of, try to get the screw into the thingy, no. Blimey, I think I need to get a different screwdriver head. No, I've got it. Now, let's just drop down and make the track. Now, the reason why it is so hard to find another screw for it is, let's look at how small that thing is. I'm just about to see that. Uh, it's tiny. So I mustn't lose these. So basically, if I was to make another one, I'll have to get like a Meccano one like this and cut about half the threads off, which will be a pain. Um, so I don't want to lose any of the screws. Yeah, that's a bit of a hard one to get to. It's right underneath here. Have I got it? I think I have. 
Sorry if the hands in the way of this screw is friggin' tiny. There. There you go. Like one more remove and the body should come off. I still need a key for it though. Um the guys just I to find one the right size. I, I mean I know there's like a whole load on eBay but and like you know on, Different websites, and, but then I don't want one that looks like you know you get with like a modern wind up thing. I want something that looks old, you know. So it's a bit of a tight thing, but it should come off like that. There, right. so it's the body off. Oh. Right, so this reveals the inside. Now, this is what I meant by that wind up thread thing. Of course, you know, you'd. <sighs> Should we get some pliers or something? Beforehand, but that of course winds up. Now, unfortunately, we can see that these ones are doing what I'm supposed to do and be unwound, but these ones here are really tight at the top. That's because somewhere around this, there is a split somewhere. I mean, it's snap just means you can't wind it up. So I need to find a new one of them. I also need to find a new wheel. Because it shouldn't look like that with a big split in it. So anyway. Let's just... Oh, I'm breaking the track now. Let's just... Um, so we can see everything inside of it works. It's just very good. Now I had the... Oddy off when I first got it. You know, because I had to get everything working. So I had to oil up all the cogs up here, which is just behind this spinny thing. So I'll take the chassis out of shot. And it's putting it in shot. If I tell you what, I'll just move the bit of track that it's on to, just to save me a little bit of time. Well, um, space really. And now we can start work on the lovely body. So, if you watched the first video, um, you will have seen that I found no information on these at all. So I can't even tell you when it was made, but I do know it's very old. So anyway, we can see in here it's quite dusty, but I don't know if you can tell, but it's dark green just like the outside. And that feels the same texture as the paint on here, so I think I might have been repainted at some point. Because what I think was, it was this orangey-red colour originally. Because that feels nice and s smooth, like, you know, factory applied paint is. And then the rest is, like, rough sort of hand-painted feel. So anyway, the first job that we need to do is... Is to this sandpaper. It's quite rough. I should probably have more fine stuff, but, you know, just get the paint off. I'm just going to start to remove the paint, which can be a messy job, as you'll see on the paper which I've laid down on the desk. You know, keep, you know, so I can just lift the paper off and pour the dust in the bin instead of getting it all on the floor. If you just gonna very gently take it all off. God, I went everywhere. Um, yeah, I should probably have more fine sand paper. It's alright because you know I'll I'll go over it again with some finer stuff. You can see the paint is starting to come off quite nicely. Um, so yeah, now if we go over the top of this logo here, where we can see that this is number zero, even though on the chassis it's number seven, obviously this logo is number zero. 
I think I might get some custom etched um like number plate things from here, you know, I got like um local number which us like what all the great western locomotives had from here. Or or I'll give the local like a name. I don't know, I'm not sure yet. So anyway. Let's carry on. So when you s and then like paint off, don't be shy, you know, like don't go, oh, I'm gonna ruin it, you know, like just get in there and get it off, really. So its body isn't actually all that bad. We can see that there's a few rust spots here and there, but nothing too bad. Uh, um, I was expecting when I was sanding this down that you know I just find rust absolutely everywhere, but it's actually not in too bad, Nick. So even though the cab's a bit bent and wonky, and so is the upper beam, um, the the actual body and the structure of it it's actually fairly decent um, so yeah now I think I'm going to make this sort of a little series of when I restore this local so um, yeah I think that's what I'll do so anyway in this video, I'll only sand, you know, a little bit of the local down. And then the next video, I'll get on to painting it. So, um, if you're still watching, go to the comment section down below and comment what colour this show would be in. A dark green like what it is now. A light apple green. Um, British Rail Blue, um, or like the LMS Dark Red. So, go to the comment section and comment which livery he, I mean, you would like this local to be in. So basically, it's just to get the thick of the paint off at the moment. And then oh, when I find like more fine sand paper, I can get, you know, the nice little bits off like around the, um, I don't actually know what they're called. They're like sort of, oh, well, I'm on the real locals. It's like sort of a strip of metal that holds the um, cladding and the boiler casing on. But I don't know what they're called. I need to search and read about it. So, let's just get a thick of the paint off. Yeah, so there's a little bit more rust around here. The sand paper's now black and fallen at the pieces. Um, but the body, I thought, like, you know, I, 
I just thought I'd find more rust on this than what's on, you know, most cars these days. Um, well, you know, the um, sort of slightly older ones. But no, it's not actually that bad. It's just a few little rust spots here and there. Which is always good for me, because I don't have to sit here for hours and actual bits of rust. As you can see, there is a bit of a mess starting to appear. Well, well, it was here before, but you know. So, by the looks of things, I think the rust is just going to be a little bit like here and there. Let's have a look at the cab, see how much rust is on that. Cabs doesn't look too bad rust-wise. Yeah, I don't think the cab's too bad rust-wise. I've not found any rust spots yet. I mean, there is a sort of little bit of surface rust around, sort of the bits that have been exposed for a long time. Um, like you can see, there's a few spots appearing around there that are a bit rusty. But apart from that, the rust basically is not any, which is always a good thing. Um, so yeah, really um, what I should do is use like a sand blasting machine to where they get like really fine sand and it basically goes through like a sort of jet wash that you wash your car with or only it doesn't spray water out, it sprays that really fine sand out. I think I should use that and I'll take the paint off. Leave me with a, a, a smooth thing instead of with all these little scrapes in which you can see. Um, but unfortunately I don't have one. Any school I go to doesn't have one, I don't think. Um, and I don't know anyone who has one, so I'm going to have to do it by hand, unfortunately. And I can't use like, you know, like any power tools because with this being tin it'll just basically sand straight through it yeah, I've got a thick spot of paint here So I think I'll make each one of these episodes about 20 minutes long. And then, you know, basically don't get bored of, you know, hours and hours of it. All the dust just falls off of it. Off. See if I can get these rust spots out by sanding the area slightly. Just experimenting on this really small one so I don't make a big mess of it. I probably could, but I mean, I am taking a little bit off the body, like. So, like I said, I think these will be about 20 minute long episodes, looking at the timer, we're about there now, so if you've enjoyed the video and you want to see more on the restoration work on this local, then please leave a like. 
And if you're new to the channel, or if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And I'll see you in the next video.